So I was perusing through Reddit this morning. I don't do that very often. Sometimes I, I feel like I need a shower afterward, but I digress. Uh, I was kind of, when I'm trying to look for a topic, especially as we're going into this extremely busy launch season, we've got new CPUs from AMD, new graphics coming from AMD, new graphics coming from Nvidia, new CPUs coming from Intel. That's four major launches. They have tons of testing and stuff that have to happen in between. But you know what these launches also do? Force people to start having this internal, internal dialogue with themselves. Like, is this now the time I should upgrade? Should I upgrade to the newest thing? Should I just get the, the previous generation, maybe a top tier of the previous generation now that it's discounted. So today we're gonna to talk about that. We're gonna talk about for those bu buying or building their first computer, not those that have ex experience building and those that are upgrading a current system. I'm gonna talk specifically to those that are building their first system and maybe give you some food for thought of where to shop that we can get the most for your money without necessarily overspending. We've talked about the overspending discussion in the past, but this is those that are building an entire system. The reason for that is the amount of people I found posting in just the last 24 hours, pictures of their part setups of like, hey, I'm finally building my first system after this whole pandemic, sh pandemic shortage and scalping pricing thing. It's like people are building again. So let's talk to those that haven't spent their money yet so that you can maybe have some things to consider. The new H7 series from NZXT offers tempered glass side panels, toolless panel removal for easy installation, front and top side 360 millimeter radio support, and integrated cable management bar for clean cable installs. To see the complete feature set and variations of the H7 available, including the H7 Flow, follow the link in the description below. All right, so we're gonna focus kind of specifically on CPUs slash motherboard and graphics. Um, RAM, storage, and all that sort of stuff. RAM is kind of a side, bar kind of a side product of CPUs that's going to determine what kind of RAM you go with. Um, but storage and case and power supply and all that sort of stuff, those are all secondary because they depend on what the main componentry is that you get. Uh, but you have to ask yourself some major questions here. What games are you playing? Right, so, so I'll kind of give you the topics here first and then we'll sort of break it down. So what games are you playing? Are you playing AAA, super hard to run, big studio titles? which always are gonna leverage the latest technology, because remember, they get subsidized funding from either NVIDIA or AMD or both to utilize technologies that are coming out or are gonna come out or have come out to utilize that tech. So there's that. Are you playing indie titles, titles that are not necessarily that hard to run? Are you playing older titles? You're just kind of getting into PC gaming now and you're going back and playing titles you've always heard great things about and you want to experience that story before you even get into the newer stuff. Um, what resolution are you playing at? 1080p, QHD or 1440p, 4K. Are you playing ultra wide? Super ultra wide? Super, super mega ultra wide? I don't know, they keep getting wider, not necessarily taller. So um, what resolution obviously are you playing at? Uh, and then obviously what's your budget? Because budget determines everything. None of that other stuff matters because if your budget doesn't allow you to shop for any of that stuff, right? If, you, for, if you're not buying a 4K panel, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what 4K has to offer, it's just not in the cards, right? So these are the things we have to talk about. So first, when it comes to the titles and the developers, that's gonna indicate where you should shop, budget aside, where you should shop for your particular use case. So if you're gonna go back and play older titles, like you've never played CSGO, but you've heard a ton of stuff about it. So you're like, I wanna play the CSGO game. You don't need a really high-end system. You don't even need a mid-range system. The only people that care about that are those that are playing esports when it comes to CSGO and competitive because they need the ultra high refresh rate and the ultra high FPS because it has to do with input lag and latency and all that. It's one of those things like, unless you experience it at that level, you're not gonna even notice that, that type of input latency at 300 FPS versus 600 FPS and that click took two milliseconds longer, therefore you died. The average gamer doesn't care about any of that crap. You don't need high-end hardware to run that. Are you gonna go back and start experiencing the Far Cry series where you're gonna start at Far Cry 1, which could run on a potato today? and then work your way all up through Far Cry 6, which would need the latest hardware to get a decent you know, frame rate at even 1080p. Do you have to ask yourself what titles you're gonna play? Because the hardware that you choose today is not only affecting the titles you can play now and titles that are already launched, it's gonna affect how long you can play into the future before a new upgrade is required. And the only reason I say that is as developers are developing titles, like I've said, they do have subsidized funding to use certain tech from, the, from either CPU or GPU or both, they also are gonna have a expected gaming experience for the end user. That's why you see minimum requirements. Minimum requirements do nothing but say the game will actually do a system check and say it has met the requirements and load the title, and they don't always not load. They don't 
They don't necessarily say, hey, you're below the minimum specs, you can't run this title. It's just the title will run and then you'll be at like 15 FPS and you'll just be unhappy. But there's an experience that they want you to see. There's lighting effects they want you to see. There's shadows, there's, there's an ambiance, there's, a, there's an entire experience they want you to see, not just play, but see. And uh, if you're below those specs and you have to turn that stuff off, it's, it's, a, it's not the experience they expect from you. It's just like how a cinema, a cinema Photographer shoots in a certain way, an editor is expected to present that to you as the viewer of a movie in a certain way. Games are very, very similar. So the story driven, and then there's obviously the visual effects that they want you to be able to see. And if you're below where you can turn those effects on, then the game may have may have some lackluster you know, visuals to you. If you, all you care about is the title and the story, then put it on low and off you go. Hey, that's, new. <laughs> that's a short idea. Put it on low and off you go. When it comes to the hardware though, there becomes a point where if you hang on to your hardware long enough, you're gonna be below the minimum specs. Now that would be years and years and years, 10 years probably before you're below minimum specs. In fact, a lot of games right now, even AAA titles, the minimum specs sometimes even reference AMD FX. Okay, that's, a, that's back like 2009, 2010 era. Okay, maybe 2011, I think is when they stopped sort of advancing FX, but I digress. That's a long time ago. So as you can see, it stays relevant, you're able to load the game, but it's not gonna be the best experience. So, if you're gonna buy hardware today, if you buy anything new coming out, Intel 13th gen, AMD 7000 series, Nvidia, uh, what is it now, 4000 series, AMD 7000 graphics, even if you buy mid-range, low-end, whatever, when it comes out in the current gen, it's gonna stay relevant into the future. It's just obviously like an RTX 4080 would stay relevant longer than say an RTX 3060 just because of the horsepower involved. CPU, that's an area where you could certainly uh, save some money. I think see, most people have get caught up in the glamor and such of graphics cards. That's, that's your bragging point. Not many people care about what CPU a person's running. That's not the bragging point. It's the, I got this shiny new 4090 Ti. Yeah, you're gonna get two responses. I'm jealous or you're an idiot for spending that much money. Like those are the two responses you're gonna get. And obviously, you have to, especially on Reddit, you have to have thick skin if you're gonna post your system because you're gonna get critique and you're gonna get praise, both of them. So, and, and remember, all of that critique and praise is based purely on subjective opinion, not fact. It, it's your money, it's your system, you buy whatever you want, so that aside. An RTX 4090 obviously would last a long time into the future, but CPU-wise, CPUs become less relevant slower and longer than graphics. Graphics, when it comes to gaming, is still like the end all be all experience effector, if that makes sense. It's the thing that's gonna determine, for the most part, your gaming experience. The only time the CPU really starts to come in is if you're playing some super CPU intensive title like Civ. Far Cry actually has a lot to do with CPU. Microsoft Flight Sim has a lot to do with CPU. Anything big, open world, Minecraft has a lot to do with CPU. And it's funny, Minecraft people say, well, it's just blocks. Have you ever actually seen the size of a Minecraft world? There's a video out there that shows all the different game worlds compared to each other and the size of them. Minecraft is bigger than the earth, okay? It's a lot, it really, it's not rendering all of it at the same time, but it is huge. And if you start adding things like shader mods and stuff like that, it can really bring a system to its knees quickly, even modern systems today. So. Don't discount Minecraft as being something you can play on a potato. You can on low settings, but if you want it to look good, and you absolutely can, then the highest end hardware is gonna actually be best for you on that. But CPU does not become obsolete nearly as fast as graphics. So right now, like the sweet spot on CPU is honestly gonna be any sort of eight core 16 thread, six core 12 thread, or even four core eight thread, depending on what CPU it is. And remember, core and core count and logical processor count is not created equal. Because I keep seeing people say something like, well, I'm on a 7700K, you know, that's a four core eight thread, that's fine. Why should I upgrade a four core eight thread CPU that's five, six years old with a new four core eight thread? They're not cross comparable like that. It's all about architecture. It's all about IPC, it's all about clock speed. There's so many things that, that determine that. So same, just like clock speed itself is not direct comparable. IPC or instructions per clock how many cycles or how many instructions is that same cycle able to produce on this CPU versus this CPU. But you know, at the end of the day, if you're building a gaming system, most of that just doesn't matter. It only shows up in benchmarks. 
and the end experience, unless you're gaming on something like 1080p with a high-end graphics because you want that 300 hertz monitor to hit 300 FPS, isn't going to matter. Because the easiest way to bottleneck a CPU would be put a super high-end graphics card on a 1080p game or a 1080p panel and play it in 1080p, then your CPU is gonna be like, oh my God, what are all these frames? What do we do with them? And then what you'll notice is that there's headroom and extra FPS that graphics card's capable for that you aren't getting because your CPU is holding it back. So there's a lot of mixing and matching and component combos out there that are basically endless. But right now, if you're building a system and you're waiting for next gen, you're, whether that be Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA, you're the kind of person that probably none of this information is gonna matter because you're a lot like me. You want the high-end stuff and it doesn't matter. It just, you want the bragging rights. You're gonna buy top tier anyway, it's not gonna matter. And you know what, you're gonna probably be like me. It's gonna sit there, it's gonna look pretty, you're gonna run a benchmark eventually every now and then to make yourself feel better, see where you rank, and off you go and go back to work and then you play the thing once a month. That, that's the reality of a lot of people when it comes to real work, real world jobs, and then having time for gaming. Where the hobby is building the system, not necessarily playing on. But if you're the average consumer, you don't have that luxury usually. So mid-range, shooting somewhere right in the middle, let's say the new, um, 7600X, it's an amazing CPU coming out. The problem, I mean, it's $300. That's, that's still an expensive CPU, but not, it's not that expensive if you really compare to, you know, $700 CPUs, $1,000 CPUs. Remember for a while there, Intel 10980XEs, those were $2,000, it's insane. Things have kind of come back down to planet Earth when it comes to pricing. But 7000 series, Probably not necessarily the system for you if you're shooting in that price point in that mid-range. Let me tell you why. It's because the new stuff is gonna have to, is gonna require DDR5. Now DDR5 has come down in price a lot. However, when you got when you go with the latest stuff, you're required to adopt the latest. Another indicator or another factor here that might matter to you is are are you absolutely defiant and resi resist and will not upgrade Windows to Windows 11, then none of that matters because you're gonna be required to run Windows 11 for any of the latest software or any of the latest hardware when it comes to CPU. For instance, 12th gen requires Windows 11. That's just because of the scheduler when it comes to what to do with E cores and P cores. You can run 5000 series AMD on Windows 10 and I haven't tried older, so I can't speak to Windows 88.1 and all and Windows 7 and all that personally. But you're required to run it on the newer stuff because of the scheduler. You can guarantee AM5 is gonna also require Windows 11. They haven't said it, but I guarantee it's gonna be the case. But I still think right now an amazing combo that wouldn't cost a ton would be something like a 5600X. 5000 series AMD and Zen 3 architecture has been absolutely amazing. It's been, it, it, it's insane how good it is. It's IPC, it was amazing. It's clock speed, a little bit lacking, but still higher than Zen 2 and Zen 1.5 and Zen 1 high enough, IPC is great, bottlenecking of games pretty much non-existent, you know, depending on, again, on what graphics you hook up to it. Still runs DDR4, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than DDR5, which means you can run low-rend motherboards. Motherboards have been developed for five, AMD 5000 series already all the way down the stack, down to your $100 motherboards. So you can get away with cheaper RAM, cheaper motherboards, cheaper CPU, you don't have to run some crazy ass cooler because it uses a ton of watts like Intel would. AMD is still very efficient in terms of temperature management. So you don't have to run some crazy cooler, which means you don't have to run some giant case that costs a fortune with the 1200 fans in there. You don't have to run a thousand watt plus power supply because for graphics, you can get away perfectly with something like a 3060 or a 3060 Ti or on the AMD side, you can get away with something like a 6600 right, 6600 XT, um, 6700 even. AMD is a lot cheaper than Nvidia right now, even with the price drops. And if you don't care about ray tracing or any of that stuff, then you don't care about all the extra uh, RT cores and stuff that are found in you know 30 series and up upcoming 40 series Nvidia stuff. You play all your titles at high settings, 1080p, even 1440p, no problem whatsoever. Again, panels won't cost you a fortune because of the fact that you're not shopping in 4K. 1440p panels that are IPS and high refresh rate and fast response time are gonna cost you 250, 300 bucks for like a 27 inch panel. So you can be running multiple panels if you wanted and then not, those would cost less than a single 4K IPS high refresh rate HDR panel. Because all those extra acronyms, all they do is add cost, but for the end user, most of the time, it doesn't matter to them. Only the enthusiast would care about any of that sort of stuff. So you can see that where I'm getting at here, 
As the next gen stuff comes out, the older gen stuff obviously becomes cheaper, specifically on CPUs and, and, and whatnot. The problem is if you wait too long, now that we have Intel 13th gen, which is gonna be DDR5 only, remember 12th gen is shared, DDR4 or DDR5, depending on the motherboard you go with. But with AM5 coming out being exclusively DDR5, and 13th gen coming out exclusively DDR5, you're gonna notice DDR4 is gonna start getting really cheap really quick, and then become really hard to get, and then it's gonna shoot up in price really high, which is what RAM has always done. It becomes really cheap as it's going out, and then as it becomes scarce, the price goes way up. So if you're looking to buy a system right now, buying the mid-range to upper mid-range of the outgoing generation is typically the best price to performance that you're gonna get. The only thing is, obviously, there is a limited upgrade path with a lot of that stuff, specifically regarding RAM and whatnot, as it goes into the future. You're looking at an entire system upgrade anyway when it comes to CPU and motherboard and all that and RAM if you decide to upgrade. But that's the typical upgrade path anyway for most people. But that's the problem with PC, and I think that's where a lot of first-time buyers become extremely confused is the fact that there is like an endless amount of combos that you can come up with on mixing and matching parts. Lastly, um, budget. Budget is gonna matter. If you're, if you're very budget conscious and very budget minded, you're more than likely not gonna shop the latest gen anyway. There's a ridiculous value in outgoing generations. You know, it's not like anyone on a 5000 series CPU right now, come the end of September when the new stuff comes out from AMD, it's not like your system suddenly became shitty. Your system did not suddenly become obsolete or old. It's not like your performance suddenly got crippled in some way. Guess what? When the new stuff comes out, nothing changed for you at all. So one, if you're sitting on that hardware, don't feel inclined to upgrade just because the new stuff came out. Unless you're a douchebag like me and other folks who like to just have the latest stuff to brag about it, it doesn't matter. For those that are buying for the first time, the same thing is true for you. The performance of that stuff did not change. All that changed was the ceiling. But where you are has not moved in that performance, in, the, in that product range. And obviously if it was worth it for those people to have it and they're enjoying it and they're showing it off and they're liking it, there's no reason why you couldn't too. You can buy amazing stuff at lower prices right around the time when new stuff comes out. The only time that that's kind of been weird is, is when it comes to graphics cards, depending on the situation. And that when 30 series first launched because it was kind of unprecedented with botting and scalping and, and cryptocurrency mining and all that sort of stuff, 20 series was kind of gone immediately. But this time we know 30 series is gonna exist for a little bit longer as 40 series exists. So you have some time there to kind of, kind of plan out your next build. But your budget right now, what you could buy for $1,500, which I think is a good solid budget for an average gamer. And $1,500 is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I mean, it's, that's a few car payments, that's a rent, that's, that's a lot of stuff you could do with 1,500 bucks. It's more important than a PC. But if you're in the position to be buying a PC, and that's your budget, you can get an amazing build for that amount of money, including like a 3060 and including like a 5000 series CPU and a decent motherboard and RAM and a case and extra fans and cooler and all. You could, you could get a killer build for that amount of money. And when the new stuff drops, we will be doing some build guides that show where prices land and what you get for a certain amount of money. Just six months ago, $1,500 would have not even bought you a 3070 single component graphics card, like one piece of your system. So right now it is a, I think Paul did a video talking about why it's one of the best and worst times at the same time to build a system. It's the best time only because of the fact that prices are back to where they were in comparison to where they, or back to where they should be based on where they were. But it's also the worst time because you're right on the horizon of new stuff. I highly recommend going and watching his video as well because he gives some really good advice in there. And it's always good to kind of triangulate data and see what other people are saying and see, you know, what works for you. I hope this video has helped. Hope it doesn't seem too discombobulated and all over the place. But um, I think there's a lot of people right now that are just kind of pacing the room wondering like, what should they do? At the end of the day, it's your money. Do what you think's best for you and the timing that works for you. If you've got any advice for any people that are about to build their first system ever, getting into the, the, the PC scene and have never been here before, Sound off in the comments below what you think your best advice would be to that person. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.